Hey folks, Hugh Sweeney here back with another video and today's video is all about voiceover work. I'm going to share with you 10 tips, my best 10 tips on voiceover work right here, right now. Okay folks, firstly let me tell you that I am not a professional voiceover artist, but I have had a certain amount of experience in it. Firstly, I do a lot of my own voiceover work for my own videos here uh, that I edit, mostly corporate videos in which I often just voice over the video just for the sake of it at the start and let the client choose another voiceover artist should they want to do so. And usually of course that's gonna cost more. Now also, I actually spent just over four years working in radio part-time as a radio presenter. And in that time, I used to get called from the guys here and there to do voiceover ads uh, for different products and different companies and stuff like that. It was very simple stuff, but I did pick up a few uh, pointers here and there that I'm going to share with you right now. So let's get to it. All right. So the first tip I'm going to share with you guys is to get yourself a decent setup for recording voiceover. Okay. It doesn't have to cost the earth. Assuming that you have a laptop like a a MacBook or something like that, all you really need is a good quality microphone and a nice sound card, a sound interface device that will connect between your microphone and your computer. Now, I know there's professional voiceover artists out there that just use a USB microphone straight into their laptop, but I think it's a good idea to get some sort of sound card. Now, I use one called an Apogee Duet, which I have for about four and a half years. It works just fine. It only has two inputs, but that's all I need. Now, you don't need to get one of these ones with a massive amount of in inputs either, because when you're doing voiceover, all you need is one input, and that is for your mic, okay? So get yourself like a Focusrite or a Native Instruments or one of these you know, audio interfaces and a decent mic. Now, the mic I use is an AKG C214 uh, recording microphone here. I got this one because it's very similar to the C414 uh, by AKG, which is a very, very much a professional high, high end microphone that's used uh, for a lot of radio station work and all that type of stuff and a lot of voice recording. So it's a really proven mic in the industry and this is its baby brother that I believe shares the same diaphragm. That's why I got this microphone. Now there are obvious things you can do and something that I need to do in this room if I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Um, things like dampening the sound, okay? You shouldn't record your voice in a, like what you might call a bright room or a wet room or a very sort of noisy room where there's hard surfaces. For example, a bathroom being the, probably the worst example. And one way you'll know uh, how the room sounds is if you clap. If you clap and you look at your recording and you see when that clap, that tail finishes off. Now you can get a professional in to, to measure that, but it's pretty obvious stuff, okay? So lots of soft surfaces to dry down the sound. Now, if you can't afford much, what you can do is you can literally invest in some sort of sound absorbing uh, insulation. You know the insulation that they put in between walls? That stuff will dampen it right down. Now it's not gonna look the best, uh, but it will work for you. Now, I have in the past, in emergencies, literally held up a quilt over my head to dampen down the sound around the microphone. It's very important to get a good signal ratio into your computer. You want, uh, what I suggest you do is talk loudly into the microphone and get the signal just where it's maxed out, where you're gonna be as loud as possible, but make sure it's not clipping at zero decibels. Get it to like minus three or four. And, and then you know that you're not going to clip, you're not going to be too loud in your recording and you're going to have a nice, a perfect signal. And you don't want to have it too quiet either where you have to amplify it afterwards and you're going to increase those other sounds that the microphone picks up. So that's very important, okay? The second point I'll share with you today is just to learn how to sound better. Sound like the best example of you possible when you're, uh, when you're doing your voiceover work, okay? We all get lazy in day-to-day -day, uh, conversations and when you, you talk, we naturally take shortcuts and we let words blend into each other. But just practice speaking really well and clearly and meaningfully. That is the number one tip I would share with you in terms of voiceover work. Just literally spend time reading and saying words really well, not contrived, but really well. That is the number one tip. With voiceover work, make sure you get the words out clear, okay? Have a nice clear pronunciation of each word po uh, possible. Like if I say that, uh, 
that sentence back the way I normally would. Have a nice pronunciation of each word possible. But if I'm doing it for radio, I would be like, pronounce each word perfectly. You know, and, and that way, if, 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 you've, if you say it back nice and clear, you know, your, your engineer or whatever can cut stuff up easier as well when you're editing the ad because chances are you might read out the ad 10 times and you might say certain words better and they might cut that up. That's what I do here. I'll say certain words better and I go, you know what? That first bit sucked, but I liked the way I finished that sentence. So I will cut that up here in Adobe Audition. So learn how to get each, make each word, get each word out properly. Make sure like to put the emphasis on certain words. When you bite into that burger, you know, if, you, if you're like, if you just say it normally, you're just gonna say, when you bite into that burger. But if you, if you think about it, when you bite into that succulent burger, that succulent quarter pound of beef, that succulent quarter pound of beef, you know, there's less emphasis on the word pound, but of beef, you know, it's, it's a bit stupid, my analogy here, my comparison, but you get what I'm saying, put the emphasis on the words. If you're doing an ad for a precision engineering company or something, you could say the word precise. The machine will, me will take precise measurements and cut the thing perfectly. So you'll say precise, precise, you know what I mean? You won't just say the machine will take precise measurements. The machine will take precise measurements. You be precise when you're saying the word. That's another tip I would give you, okay? The third tip when you're doing voiceover work that I have seen a lot of people do, especially when I bring people who don't have experience and they come in here and they do some voiceovers for their own videos and stuff. Nearly everybody, nearly everybody, when they're reading a sentence out, they tend to get quieter towards the end of the sentence. When they wrap up a sentence, they, they're talking like this and they're full of energy. And then as they get to the end of the sentence, they kind of quieten down. And you'll see it in your software here. You'll actually see the waveform very often going like that. So you'll have, you'll have sentences and they start off and they go like that. They start off and they go like that. So learn how to keep the volume and the energy up throughout the full sentence until you finish on the very last word. So I could say that until you finish on the very last word. That happens a lot. So just keep the energy up right through the sentence until the very end. Keep the volume up, okay? That's another tip for you. One of the most important, tip number four, one of the most important uh, tips I would give a voiceover artist, and I see it happen. I've sent scripts to people before and I got the voiceover work back, and you can tell, you can tell that they're just reading out a script, that they don't know their content and they don't care about their content. When you do a voiceover, you need to actually believe in what you're saying. If you don't believe it, that doesn't come across in the ad or in the video or whatever. You have to really believe it and feel it. Don't just read it. That is one of the most important tips that I would share with you. So believe it and feel it and say it rather than read it and also visualize it. You know, someone who reads it is just going to go, when you bite into a delicious burger and you get all those really nice flavors, that's, that's someone who reads it. But if you really feel it, visualize it, see yourself biting into that burger and you'll go more like, when you bite into that delicious burger and you get all those really nice flavorings, the sauces, the lettuce, the onions, mmm, you know what I mean? Okay, that's not a great example, but you get what I'm saying, visualize it and feel it, okay? A lot of people, a lot of sort of beginner voiceovers and stuff, I've heard them doing radio ads where they, they're just too nice and they describe the business as too bloody nice. You know, like, you know, come down to Rafferty's at the weekend. We're having a great time, everybody. It's free in for girls up until midnight. That's because the place is full of guys. Imagine if Samuel L. Jackson was asked to do a radio ad. You know, would he do that voice? Would he go, hey, everybody, come down to Rafferty's or, you know, whatever fucking name the place is. We're going to have a great night. He wouldn't. He'd do it as himself, but he'd make sure he says it really well. So sort of say it as yourself. Be yourself. Don't be too contrived. Uh, I hear that uh, a lot where people are just, you know, you can just tell it's like a, just bullshit. Just be yourself, but be a nice version of yourself. Okay. Another tip I would give you is to actually kind of warm up and sort of get into it, okay? Um, when, when you're acting, I did acting classes before and we learned how to warm up. We, we also learned how to warm up our sort of voices and even doing stupid stuff like, um, you know, using the different, 
the different syllables and the different uh, um, uh, using the different letters of the alphabet and ba 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 ta 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 ah 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 g g g and go through the different pronunciations and also even even things that seem ridiculous like putting the your tongue into the, uh, the, the your lower lip and just talk like that move your cheeks around and really exercise your face whilst talking like that and then go back to normal and when you go back to normal you sound so clear and uh, you've loosened up your mouth and stuff like that i find that works for me and it's hey it's whatever works for you when doing a voiceover and standing up to the microphone really sort of ground yourself i i, I almost think like sort of like a martial arts uh, position you know you want to like like say if someone hits you you can take it you know nicely balanced on your feet and your knees slightly bent and drop your shoulders and use your hands and just fucking nail it okay don't be sort of half ass like that with the page where you're slumped to one side and going trying to do your voiceover just really get into it use your hands to describe the words circular you know round square you get me use your hands pretty cool so just really get into it use your body to get into it that's another tip i would give you okay work on weaknesses that might be caused by certain things one of my weaknesses is to sound a little bit slow and a little bit a little bit dull like i can when i talk naturally i'm a little bit deep and i can be a little bit slow and lacking in energy so I have to be, I, like even doing this video, I have to work on my chirpiness and keep it chirpy and make sure that I get the words across uh, in the right amount of time. When I was getting voiceover ads to do from the radio station, they used to say to me, right, this, this is a 30 second ad. So you, your talking has to be finished in 25 seconds. And I used to struggle to actually say it all in 25 seconds. And I used to give it to the guy and it used to be like 32 seconds long. And he'd go, man, you need to shave off seven seconds. So I used to find myself having to talk really fast. It seemed unnatural for me. But when you hear the ad back, it's actually to another person. It sounds normal. So we're, like that is my weakness, talking a little bit too slow. So I have to focus on talking a little bit faster. Also, your local dialects. Do you pronounce words badly? Have you got a certain accent? I, I come from Galway in the west of Ireland. And in terms of the Irish accent, it is quite a neutral accent, okay? There's areas of Ireland where people sound a little bit more, shall I say, kind of, you know, backward or, you know, in Dublin, they, they you know, strong Dublin accent sounds like that. Now, that might be an effect, like, people might want that in certain radio ads. That's cool as well. But um, if you pronounce words, like, a lot of people in Ireland say the word tree instead of three. They'll, they'll count in one, two, three, four, five. And it kind of sounds dumb. So, like, if you're doing an ad and you're, you're saying, uh, there's, there's three reasons to visit such and such a place. You know, it's going to sound dumb. So make an effort not to make mistakes ba that, you know, that you do normally for, because of your accent or something. Work on those things. Okay, that is another tip I would give you. My advice would be to get kind of good in your software as well. I use Adobe Audition here. Get to know it. Now, you don't want to be adding effects and, you know, cleaning up shit yourself. But you could get to know how to maybe cut uh, the best versions out yourself and when you're sending an ad to a company maybe fucking just you know say look here's the best bits or whatever just get get comfortable in your software that's you know spend time practicing your software in this case i use adobe audition another tip i would give you is sort of try and bring something else to the table i mean you're going to want to have your proper you voice okay but it's a good idea to be able to bring something else to the table as well be it impressions or be it different voices. You don't need to be able to impersonate everyone, but you might be able to do, you know, impersonate a kind of uh, a, an interesting character. It might be a totally fictional character or an accent or something like that. And if you can have a few different things, people might call you up and say, hey, I want you to do an ad with this voice that you're pretty good at. I just started doing impersonations when I was driving my car and I never even thought about it. And there was impersonations that I used to do that I never even shared with anyone. And I had a demo done and one of the guys in the radio station heard it. And he says, you know what? He says, I liked the way you did Morgan Freeman. And then one day the, the, the phone rang and this, this uh, studio a couple of hundred miles away, this guy there said, hey, man, I heard you can do a Mor Morgan Freeman. We need, we need a Morgan Freeman for an ad, a radio ad. And I had to do an ad with Morgan Freeman's voice. And it was very simple. 
you know, but they put the sound underneath it and it worked out just fine. Now, that was not a good Morgan Freeman, but I made sure I did a good Morgan Freeman. So if you have a few little things that you can practice on, you know, when you're driving around, practice it and you'd be surprised. I recently started doing Michael Caine. My name is Michael Caine. And <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. Now, I am not really doing radio ads or any, any of that stuff. My preferred work is in video, but it's nice to have the ability to be able to do voiceovers for my videos and to be able to send a finished, a, a finished package to a client without needing to get a voiceover artist. Now, I do get voiceover artists and I don't believe in taking business from anybody, but I think it's nice that uh, you can do it when I'm shooting videos and I'll go, you know what, I'm going to bounce down a voiceover. If you like it, you can have it. I'll include it in the video. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I enjoyed doing this. It sort of loosened me up. And um, today is actually St. Stephen's Day. It's the day after Christmas. I hope everyone who watches this channel had a really nice Christmas. It's a couple of days to, to 2018. And I, I hope you guys, all my subscribers, I hope you're going to have a really good 2018. Check me out on social media as well, on Facebook, and check me out on Instagram. I'll leave the links below. And guys, you know, please subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the Hugh Sweeney YouTube channel. And uh, I will be back later. And peace.